um, straight in. See, I'm from a place where a gun in the hand is more celebrated than a man with a plan. Mm. A place where a man is laughed at and called a one burner for being loyal to one woman. I am from a place where being emotionally vocal as a male is seen as soft and weak and that cry for help doesn't get its true recognition. A place where your environment can negatively influence your dreams and directly limit their realization. I am from a place where there's a false sense of security created by so-called area dons. A place where the normalization of death has become a permanent fixture in our psyche, so most times to most of us, it's just another day where we're from. I am from a place where there's a good chance that ammunition outnumber the local population three to one. I am from a place 90 miles south of Cuba, 118 miles west of Haiti, a small island called Jamaica. Yes, I am Jamaican. Born in Spanish Town Hospital, bred in the parish of St. Catherine, which was once the nation's capital. I am from a place where my people, they aren't perfect and they struggle daily against a socially corrupt institution. On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a one. A blessed and wonderful Thursday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories for share with you, the regular members of Chan Public, and also members of the diaspora. So, please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So in yesterday morning's vlog, just before the On The Spot News Media intro, I played a plea from a female who has been searching for her mother for over 15 years. I went through some of the comments on Channel Star, On The Spot News Media, the spotters, Channel, you know, brutal more time, you know, but brutally honest nonetheless. Many were saying that it took you 15 years to start looking for your mother. It's not a good look. But anyway, on the spot news media have an update for you. Look and see where I go on. What's your name? Maxine. Yeah. The Maxine what? William? Rosemary William. All right. They were looking at you on the on the spot um, news. And I saw your picture and thing. But your daughter were looking for you and stuff like that, you know? But anyway, this... This is the right person, and this is Babev William, right? Maxine William, okay, all right. Yeah. Um, you have a number, you can contact, tell me your phone number, my can't contact. 572 9454. You can contact that Carol number, and, and this is Bev. She, she's okay and she's alive and thing, all right? And do you have anything to say? She's okay, all right, I'll contact you, I'll send it to you. Now I just want to say a big shout out and a big thank you from On The Spot News Media to this On The Spot News Media spotter that spotted this woman and did the video and sent it in. She has now been reunited with her daughter. 15 years and now they have been reunited. It is said that the elderly woman as you can see is partially blind and is really in need of help. So I guess her daughter reach out just about the right time when she is definitely in need of help. Now stories like this makes on the spot news media work worthwhile doing. So blessings again to the family that has been reunited and to that person who helped to find her. Thank you. Blessings. So now my peeps, I could get into morning's set of stories. The knockings and clappings continues. Now over there in the St. Catherine South Police Division, the community of Portsmouth, just right across from the Heart NTA, has been rocked with a series of knockings and clappings yesterday morning, where two men 
get seriously can up one no longer among the land of the living the men we get can up is sanitation workers employed to the national solid waste management authority the incident which occurred sometime about 10 30 a.m has left one worker lifeless and the other admitted in hospital in a serious condition the deceased man has since been identified as statish james it is reported to on the spot news media that both men were in the process of collecting household garbage in the Portsmouth community area in Portmore St. Catherine when they were attacked by criminal elements who opened gunfire hitting both men. They were rushed to the hospital where James was pronounced you know what upon arrival. The other worker is admitted in serious condition. Now I'm going a little clippings of what really took place. I can't give the visual, but of course, I will most definitely give the audio version of that brutal attack on the Solid Waste Management Authority workers. So, more on to listen to this clip, then, of course, I'll get further into the story. Listen. Yes, my peeps, another harsh and sad reality. Another set of family presently in mourning. Really sad, my peeps, for see where and what our dearly beloved island home, Jamaica, has narrowed down to. The criminal elements continues to rant and rage right across the length and breadth of Jamaica. Yeah, man. So now the head director of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, Audley Garden, has condemned the knockings and clappings which claim the life of one of his worker and also the seriously injuring of another. And he has this to say about that brazen and brutal attack on the NSWME workers. Listen. That was the voice of Audley Garden, executive director of the NSWMA. Poor me, I tell my peeps, the thing rough. And on the topic of the thing rough, pun intended, still in the St. Catherine South Police Division, the police states that they have charges pending against a veteran female dancehall entertainer in relation to the seizure of an illegal firearm at her home in Portmore, St. Catherine. The artist had been in custody since the recovery on Sunday, May 21st. The police reported that 
cops attached to the St. Catherine South Police Division were on an operation in the Greater Portmore era, during which a premises was searched. According to the police, a handgun was discovered hidden among female items of clothing in a dresser drawer. The female occupant was subsequently taken into custody on suspicion of breaches of the Firearms Act. The police says investigations are ongoing. Now, it has been revealed to on the spot news media that that particular female dancehall artist, a female veteran dancehall artist, has since been identified as this woman presently on your screen, Sharon Peterkin. But more popularly known in the dancehall fraternity as Ruffian. <laughs> yeah, man. So one of on the spot news media spotters have revealed that Ruffian was indeed a licensed firearm holder, but that license to carry was revoked by the FLA and both the license and the firearm was taken away from the veteran female dancehall artist. Now, as I stated earlier, the police went, searched and found another firearm in a dresser drawer with female clothing on her premises. She was taken into custody for same and now charges are pending against that veteran female artist. So we just want to see how this one are going to unfold to see if the female dancehall artist is on her way to prison for 15 years for illegal possession of firearm. But the police have not yet laid charges officially but charges are indeed pending. So on the spot news media will most definitely keep in touch and stay close to this one and bring it to you as soon as official charges are laid against her. Well, my peeps, I just hope that other dancehall artists are listening and looking on. If you were given a permit, if you don't have a permit, go seek one. If it was revoked, leave illegal weaponry alone. It would have been easier for her to hire an off-duty officer, a licensed firearm holder, to, you don't know, chads around with her, a little bodyguard type of thing. I just saw the thing set right and now it no make no sense. You're caught with an illegal weapon and looking at the bare minimum, of 15 years in prison is it worth it i don't think so but anyway make we continue so the last thing that we are going to talk about you know is some utterances from justice minister delroy chuck that says harsher penalties to murder convicts will help reduce the number of reprisal knockings and clappings in the country Minister Chuck made the argument on Wednesday in his opening remarks at a meeting at a Joint Select Committee of Parliament considering amendments to the Criminal Justice Act. So we are going to hear from Minister of Justice Delroy Chuck. Listen. If the sentence of the court fails to meet the denunciatory impulse of the victims, families and friends, the usual and unfortunate response is to take revenge and reprisal action on the criminal and on his family. In fact, revenge and reprisal killings constitute a major and significant number of the killings across our country over the past decades, especially those emerging from gang conflicts. This cycle of violence, revenge, reprisal and retaliation must cease. And one sure measure to do so is to apprehend, charge, convict and lock away criminals for long, exceptionally long periods. A court sentence must appropriately express the anger, revulsion, and the sentiments of the society. 
When killings occur, the families and friends of the victims feel strongly that the killers, having deprived their loved ones of their lives, should not be allowed to enjoy their lives in a free society. The victims' families feel strongly that the killer should spend a very long time incarcerated to match the seriousness and severity of the offense committed. If the truth be told, many want the death penalty to be imposed. So under the new proposed legislation, a sentence of capital knockings and clappings that results in the loss of life of a man or woman will carry a mandatory minimum prison term of 45 years up from 15 years. The sentence for persons convicted for non-capital knockings and clappings resulted in the loss of life of some people will be moved from 35 years up from 10 years. So Minister Chuck says far too often, Families of victims are left feeling a sense of injustice due to the seemingly light sentences handed down to those found guilty of taking the lives of their loved ones. So my peeps, again to the masses, a word to the wise is always sufficient. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to Underspot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast. Underspot News Media. Yeah, man.